Hey guys, welcome to the Outlet Podcast. My name is Gazy, and man, I had a long day. But I'm happy to do another vlog entry for Anime Sivu Play. It's That's a playlist that I do containing everything about anime, cosplay, um, go- convention news, all that stuff. So today, whoop, there we go. What I want to do is talk about, oh, do episode two, two. Uh, episode two of um, Your Lie in April, My Notes. So I was taking notes while I was watching this anime. Um, I was enjoying it. I sat down and did watch it. But uh, every so often, if something stuck out to me, I took notes. And every all of the reasoning I have is not to be like a critic <clears throat> or to judge in, or to judge an anime, like or ju- ju- prejudge a show. Uh, well, I took notes because I found it, I find it interesting that there was a slew of anime that was just very formulaic, Um, you know, and I don't believe that we fans, current day fans who pay, um, you know, to view and stream content, I don't feel that we should be treated to mediocre stuff. I think... You know, we can look past, uh, look past certain things, look at through storylines, and come up with really clever uh, art. So, if we ha- if we have this ability to be this way, then I certainly believe that uh, writers have the ability to uh, be better, be more profound than we are. So, you guys, uh, today there is a there is a spoiler, and I'm just gonna leave it till the end, so I'll let you know. There's a lady. I think she's talking to herself. Um, so, number one, there's tons of flashbacks. Now, flashback is a tool that uh, I know that people use to, like, okay, to point something important that happened in the past that now is very, very relevant. Um, and in anime, you see it, like, in various ways. And it's sometimes it's really well done. And sometimes it's uh, done, like crappy like you know and sometimes it an anime can have a full episode as a flashback um arrow not an anime arrow does it like they have two separate uh, lives of uh of um whatever his name is i don't want to say stephen amell but you know the the arrow this dude whatever his name is but they do stu- they do two different versions of the show you know one happening in the past one happening when you know in the present so the, in in this anime there's tons of flashbacks and what kind of bothers me is that the flashbacks that are done are just flashbacks that happened like two years ago two or three years ago it's not that like profound of a thing it just happened so i mean for and because they're eight-year-olds well eight-year-olds pardon me because they are ooh, uh, in eighth grade, it's like, wow, what happened three years ago or in your childhood that you harp on as if you're like an adult, like you're like this morning adult and with uh, like crying over after being uh, like crying over uh, like over themselves because of um, because of a meeting that they're having with their psychologist. It's weird. It's weird, and I. It's just so weird, guys. So, uh, all the flashbacks. It's pretty boring. It's it's overused, in my opinion. Um, I don't like that many flashbacks. Now, some of them are very relevant. Some of them are art, artist, artistically done. So it's very, that's nice, you know. But that's just a, a couple out of the handful. So, something I observed in general. Tons of flashbacks. <clears throat> I'm letting my opinion be known. I should just keep that till the end. Uh, there are so many monologues and soliloquies. When that per when there can be a group hanging out together, and this is something that happens in animes, where some one person will take the narrative, where they'll do the or they'll y- speak in soliloquy, or they'll have a monologue. That's fine. <clears throat> That's fine. But there are so many. And it's so bothersome. Okay, um, like for example, 
I don't need, like, I, I think I talked about this in the last episode, but I don't need for, I don't need to hear everyone's opinion about someone playing, uh, playing, uh, Jesu Joy of Man's, Joy of Man's Desiring. That's not a piece that they played. I thought they would have, but that's not a piece that they played in uh, this thingy, in this anime. They they just like everybody was, everybody had an opinion, everybody had a voice. Not everybody needs to have a voice. I don't really care about what everyone has to think about music. Look, stuff like music is best enjoyed with an independent with independence. Let me have my own pres- Let me have my own presuppositions let me have my own opinion my own thoughts about this don't try to do my thinking for me it's so you know what it's disrespectful uh, it's not cool i definitely hate it i definitely hated it um so many people talking everybody having their inner thoughts speaking wow this person's a genius well let me why don't you just show that he's a genius you're you're you rely on people saying so much, this person's a genius, so you, that I don't see it anymore. What I do see is that this person is bought. It, I don't see what you're what you're forcing me to see because I don't want to see it anymore. You, what I do see is that this sucks. You know, so uh, there's tons of uh, monologues and soliloquies, tons of them. Um, there's so much sweating and crying. Man, you're playing piano. You're not going to war. You're not playing a sport. You're playing piano. You, okay, you're playing so hard and so much passion. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Fingers, fingers. Get over yourself. This, like, I'm sorry. So much concentration where you're sweating profusely, like, like every time. Get over it. I'm done. I'm. I was like, this is stupid. This is way. This is stupid. Everybody's sweating. It, everybody sweats. That's my problem. If you wanted to do it once or twice, that's fine. That's fine. But look, the epic beam struggle everybody remembers in Dragon Ball Z. Is not Gohan and Cell. It's Goku, Kame- uh, K.O. Ken Goku, uh, and Vegeta. Uh, you know, pre Namek or whatever. That's what everybody remembers. No one remember like when I talk about when I say epic beam struggle. That's it. That's what it is. So I don't know. I saw, I was like, geez, overkill, overkill. It was overkill. I'm sorry. That was crazy. So, oh my gosh. So, and, and I, I know, I, I know better. I know better to, when an anime like, like this, which is a slice of lifestyle, to expect that, hey, there's going to be, you're crying. Okay. But I just, I don't know. When there's so many people crying, it's like, unbearable and it's like exhausting so i didn't i don't like i don't like the so many crying now here's what i'm gonna do there this next one's a spoiler if you don't want the episode spoiled for you um please check it out uh check me out on my podcast check me out on my vlog i'll uh well i'll count three two one okay spoiler is over oh i got a nice flare oh michael bay Mm. Mm, mm. Okay, anyways, <laughs> that's awesome. I got a flare. How cool is that? Eh. That's so funny. Okay, so um, the black cat. Now, that doesn't seem like a super spoiler thing, right? Well, I noted three things, and it's very, I, I something that I appreciated. So check this out. Something I really, really appreciated is the black cat because it served like three different purposes. Um, it was the evil omen, like it was the demon, the, the monkey on his back that later, like in the, er, in the early middle of the series, 
well, the early middle of the first season, you could say, um, it was like this evil omen that he would talk to that will always haunt him, kind of always follow him. Um, and we don't know why, really. Uh, then you got, it's a symbol. So it's a symbol because uh, it's a symbol of like his fears when Kaori controls it. So there's a point where Kaori you know, is able to hold the black cat and she's petting it and soothing it and calming it. And so that's kind of her way of taking care of him or his his worries, his anxieties, his stresses. So that's very nice. It's very nice. Um, yeah, like, because it didn't seem too aggressive, his, 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 why he had the cat, but the cat that was the cat that's always following him is symbolic to the cat he used to have that his mom uh led away like i think the cat cat ran away or something i'm forgetting but um it was something that he used to cry over that he cried over so the last one is that um the loss of the dead cat now this is another cat when he was in the when it was towards the end of the season, um, Kaori has a seizure, and it was really shocking. Um, she had her seizure, and well, as you know, if you if you don't want it spoiled, or if you do want it spoiled, that's what happened. Um, so she had a seizure, and uh, while uh, Koze was like running away, he couldn't handle it. Um, there was a cat that got ran over. And so it was kind of going back to the fear that Kaori caught, like soothed and relaxed. Now the that soothe that the hands that soothed and relaxed were gone, and that cat was killed. So it's not that his fears were killed, but the one who had the ability to soothe is gone. And so what was once fearful and and worry, full of worry, now it got worse. Now it was dead. So the feelings got even worse. So yeah, um, very, very dark, very dark stuff, very sad stuff. But the imagery that they used with that was really cool. So I would like for you to check this anime out. Um... I would like for you to check this anime out. Um, not basing, don't base your opinion or what you want to do on my notes. My notes are just things are observations that are simple things. Uh, but your preferences are like your taste buds. They're yours and yours alone. I cannot have them. Mm. So, uh, my name is Gazy. I'm the host of the Outlet Podcast. Hope you enjoy. I'm doing a lot more of these because I got a lot more notes. Connect and recharge. <laughs>